mighty return of comic book pickups because I haven't done one in quite a while and I have been meaning to. So, this is Alpha Omega Sin and I'm going to be talking about comic books and all the other jazzy stuff because, well, I do read them and they make me really happy where I pee. Also, this shirt, pretty fucking awesome, kind of fitting. Castlevania done up, uh, the original cover of Castlevania done up as Arkham Asylum. Just like that is fucking awesome. That is so damn cool. Made me really happy seeing this. I, I bought it immediately when I saw it online. I was like, oh my god, I gotta have! So yeah, I thought that was neat. And again, fitting for the video. So, go cut right to the chase of these. Normally I'd be sitting for these kind of videos, but I'm a bit like too wired and all over the place. Now the first thing is going to be the Animal Man. This is Animal Man volumes one, two, and three, if you're wondering. So we'll go and have a look at number one right there up close. Now, Animal Man has been uh, around for a while. I think originally Animal Man was part of the Vertigo lineup and then kind of just got swallowed up into DC Comics. But this is one of those things within a New 52. There, there's been people who really like New 52 and then people who didn't really like it. Part of the thing that I really liked about New 52 was Animal Man. They somehow managed to take a character that people were kind of like, ah, he's all right, I guess. And you would think just by the title alone, oh, he's a generic character, not all that interesting. The fuck he is. It, to begin with, one, he's a self-aware superhero that goes out and has a job and, and does those super things. But there's like this really fucked up ass world that basically nobody is aware of except for very few people like, I don't know, Swamp Thing and uh, Poison Ivy and uh, a few other characters. But he ends up facing off against that, him and his daughter, his daughter who's also like supremely powerful. And as a matter of fact, on the cover here, you can see, uh, see Swamp Thing going and battling it out against some of the monsters. And right there, this talks more about Rot World and the Red Kingdom. And the art style in this, uh, I'll actually pull up uh, volume two and show you some of the art. It's, it's that kind of art that's so trippy and out there and just all over the place. You're just like, holy shit, this is really detailed, really sick and twisted. In, in a good way, though. Um, it's just things like that. It, there's a lot of times where I had to stop and just start looking at the art because I appreciate it. I appreciated the monster designs. I appreciate everything that was going on within it. And... The banter in between the characters, some of the personal demons that they're overcoming, uh, the monsters that are fucking in infiltrating things, and it's like a real weird behind the scenes type of deal where, you know, the Justice League is out battling intergalactic fucking monsters that are trying to go and take over the multiverse and shit like that. You know, there's somebody like Batman that's more grounded and taking on thugs within the city in his entire fucking rogues gallery. And then there's something like Animal Man that's in a league of his own doing a lot of shit. And the thing is, a lot of people aren't aware of how cool this series is. Put it this way, I wouldn't buy three volumes of a comic if I thought it was half-assed, let alone talk about it this much. But from the art, from the storytelling, to the fact that they're bringing in characters from all sorts of different branches of DC Comics is making this really fucking awesome. In addition, just it's kind of blowing up the universe for it and making it its own thing. So they're digging out their own niche, and I like that a lot. Please read this, by all means. Even if you have to download it just to go and see, you know, whether it's awesome or not, do that and then go to either your local comic book shop or go on to Amazon and buy these books. They're awesome. They're worth every single penny. I promise you that. And again, it's one of the best things that DC Comics has come out with within, like, the new 52. This and Swamp Thing are very fucking kick-ass, so check them out. You will be quite happy. Um... One of my all-time favorite comic book series is Transmetropolitan. I'm trying to collect all things Transmetropolitan. I'm missing very few uh, things. I want the statue. It's just a bitch to get a hold of, especially for a good price, unfortunately. But I did stumble across these recently. Now, after Transmetropolitan uh, came to a close, um, Warren Ellis ended up having a whole bunch of artists come together, and what they did was they kind of drew up their own versions of Spider Jerusalem and all the other characters within the city. And I thought it was really neat just to see how other people would depict the character and, you know, all the different stuff in it. And it's supposed to just be Spider writing a bunch of, like, miniature columns 
and it's it's really cool to have found both of these like i have all the graphic novels i have all the individual issues but i never stumbled across these before and they were only a dollar a piece i was really happy to find them i just thought it was really fucking cool and if this is your first time ever hearing me talk about trans metropolitan i've wanted to review this series but if, if i had to go and sum it up really quick Batman is my all-time favorite comic book franchise ever, and has been since I was a kid. Transmetropolitan is at number two. That's how high, highly I think of it. That's how highly regarded I, I think of it. Just sincerely, check out the series. You will not be disappointed whatsoever. Nightwing. So, I'm a big fan of Nightwing. Obviously, because of Batman, Nightwing ended up turning out to be probably one of the best examples of a superhero sidekick can turn out to be a complete badass on his own. And, and Nightwing is a good example of a character evolving over time and then some. Uh, back in the 90s and two th early 2000s, Nightwing had his own standalone series, which I loved and then some. This this book right here was kind of a bitch to get a hold of. I have the individual issues, mind you, and I've read through it, but I didn't actually... I prefer having the little graphic novels and stuff because they're a lot easier for me to pick up and read because I don't have to take everything out of cardboard and plastic, read it, put it back in all carefully and stuff. So this, for me, is a lot easier. But um, this is The Hunt for Oracle, obviously. Uh, Oracle being Barbara Gordon, Barbara Gordon being uh, Batgirl, and well, a bunch of shit is going down. Blockbusters included. Blockbuster is like one of the biggest characters within the Nightwing series, so it's definitely noteworthy to go and read something like this. This is actually a very important little mini series, but uh, I'm trying to get all of the Nightwing books. I have the newer ones, but I want to get all the uh, older ones, and this is one that avoided me quite a bit, and it's odd because it's been out of print for such a long time, and I was out and about. Uh, with my dad actually we were at a comic book shop because he actually likes comics too We were looking through and I was like, you know for the fuck if I'm gonna go look at Nightwing I know I won't find it. It was in there and brand new 1495 and Brand new copy of it and you know, you don't see that anymore, especially for something that's been you know um, Out of print for such a long time. So definitely happy about that um, Let's see next Witch doctor now image comics. I'd always been like, ah, Image Comics, you know, I always thought about what they did in the 90s, and it was just kind of like, it, it, it became a big time dry spell. I'm like, ah, oh, it was very hit or miss for me. But, I came across this series. I remember I'd seen a big poster for it in the back where uh, the one comic book shop that I go to, they have like this little room in the back that looks real fucking shady, like, you know, some kind of deals go down. They're just like, what are you selling? And they're just like, <sighs> I'll buy it. <laughs> it's like, just shit like that going down. But I saw a poster for a Witch Doctor, and I'm like, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what the hell this is, because the cover of it looked really cool. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go see what it is. And I found a book. I thumbed through what would essentially be the first issue within this. I'm like, I'll buy that. Uh, on the back it says, Dr. Morrow is looking for a vaccine for the apocalypse, and in his quest to understand the biology of the supernatural, he faces vampires, demonic possession, fairies, and more. And this is collecting Witch Doctor Under the Knife collects issues 1 through 4 and issue 0 to smash hit new medical horror comic series. So, uh, being a big fan of things like Reanimator, of the paranormal, of horror, of comedy, uh, this kind of puts all that stuff together. Imagine Dr. House and Reanimator kind of coming together, and that's what this is. Uh, much more over the top with, like, uh, you know, monsters and shit like that. But this is a really good series. I, I don't have uh, anything else other than issue one. I know that they have more than that out now, but yeah, I just was really happy just to have this alone. Um, and that, that was actually uh, on the poster too, and I thought that was really cool. And it's, it's something, it's just like, dude, the fucking spider walk, like from the exorcist and shit, and it's just like, okay, you've, you've, you've got my interest, where can you go from here? So if you want to see uh, some illustrations on the inside, and ooh, I, I picked a really good page, because he's shaking a demonic baby. So, <laughs> that right there, yeah, it's like, how do you want to babysit? Well, if it's a demonic baby, you shake the shit out of it until it starts running away with all its fucking random ass appendages just sticking out of every single fucking orifice on it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it is, it's really fucking cool. I like a whole bunch. Highly, highly recommended. Um, now, we're gonna get into some of the heavy hitting stuff. 
Uh, these two I will hold up together because it's essentially part of the same exact storyline. This is New 52 Joker, and it's a big, thick-ass book, by the way. It's, like, fucking huge. And this is Batman Volume 3, Death of the Family. Now, this is one big-ass story arc, which, let's see if I can... Can I? No, no, I can't get that. The, uh, it, it's kind of neat because uh, it's actually kind of like a pseudo-mask. But anyway, the Joker had been gone from Batman comics since the New 52 for a really long time. The only time that he really showed up was early on, and he had hired somebody to cut his face off and nail it to a fucking wall. That's the Joker! Well, he just disappeared after that. Nobody had seen from him, nobody had heard from him, his name wasn't uttered even once until this story arc, Death of the Family. Now, Death of the Family is a play on words for uh, a story, one of the most important Batman story arcs, Death of the Family, um, uh, not Death of the Family, um, uh, Death in the Family, I'm sorry. De this is Death of the Family. Death in the Family is when the second Robin ended up getting killed. And that was all because people voted to have him fucking murdered, which is really ironic that it happened. But um, it, after he had gotten killed, you know, that, that was a big turning point for Batman because he had lost one of the uh, Robins who ended up coming back and we all know him as Red Hood and Red Hood is a complete and utter fucking badass. Also, his standalone series is really fucking gnarly, so you ought to check that out. But, um, and also Red Hood um, uh, under the uh, hood because that's really fucking awesome. The animated movie, the comic books, yeah, they're, they're really cool. But anyway, back to this. So the Joker ends up coming back um, he starts targeting everybody within the Bat family individually, basically telling them that, you know, you've dealt with me on a number of different times and different situations, and you never realized that I was never going after you. You, you thought that I'm this monster, that I'm this unstoppable force. Meanwhile, I've only gone after your boss. I've only gone after Batman. Now I'm going to target you, Nightwing. I'm going to target you, Batgirl. I'm going to target you, Red Hood. <laughs> we meet again. I'm going to target you, Catwoman, and so on and so forth. I mean, he even goes after Alfred. And all this is in the name of trying to go and basically cleanse Batman, ironically. That, that's what the Joker essentially is thinking, that he needs to take out all these people so that Batman can just be Batman again. And that's how the, the Joker's mind works. And this series is fucking insane. This right here uh, covers a bunch of the issues where he's going after all the individual characters within their comics. So, let's see. I think at the beginning it says exactly what issues that it covers. So I'm not going to have to go and play a guessing game. And by the way... I love that illustration right there and then some. Just very fucking eerie and it's it's very cool. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, originally published in single magazine form, Batman 13, 14, 17, Detective Comics 15, 17, Catwoman 13 and 14, Suicide Squad 14, 15. Suicide Squad, by the way, that's uh, where Harley Quinn comes into play. Batgirl number 13, 16, Red Hood. 13 uh, through 16, Teen Titans 14 through 16, Nightwing 14 through 16, and Batman and Robin 15 through 17. Now, um, and when I said and, I meant like through, sorry about that. And that's why this is such a massive ass book, by the way. And um, I, I'm a big stickler for hardcover books, so if you're wondering, why does he have so many? I just like hardcover books a lot more. But I had this pre-ordered through Amazon. Uh, I wanted to get it day one, mailed directly to my house. I both these books, as a matter of fact. But um, I get all my single issues at comic book stores. I get my uh, collected books like this through Amazon because they have really good prices. Seriously, I really can't fucking argue with it. But um, it's just all oh, this will. If you have both of these, I mean, you could just get this one right here and you'd be fine. But having both of these gives you a much bigger understanding of the entire story arc all together. So I highly suggest if you want to read this and it's very much worth reading to have both of these. Um, the dialogue back and forth between Batman and the Joker is unsettling and interesting at the same exact time because Joker essentially just keeps on telling him over and over again how important he is to him and how shitty everybody else is, like, you know, within the Bat family. And it's like Joker goes through hell and back just to fucking, like, do all this stuff in the name of Batman. And it's 
it's really fucking neat. Just, like the chemistry and and the just, it's fucked up. Like I don't know how to describe it other than you'll keep turning pages because you want to see what happens next over and over again. Once you think things hit the fan, it just gets crazier and crazier. So read these, enjoy these. I can uh, uh, gloat enough about how great they are. They're just fucking awesome. Let's see. Uh, speaking of those, I'd also gotten Batman Volume 2, which is City of Owls. Uh, Court of Owls and City of Owls, uh, essentially whenever they did the new 52, they want to bring in uh, a new menace, a new threat to Batman. And this group has been around for well before Batman was ever around. Uh, you know, they, they were like their own fucking legion. And they worked within the confines of the city, the, like the infrastructure of the city, they were built within it. You know, they, they had been around for years and they didn't like the fact that Batman had claimed the city as his own. They felt like that, you're, you're on our territory. You're calling it your city, but you don't understand, like we've been around well before you and you don't know this city as well as you think you do. So he's, he's going and trying to take these people on, and I mean, they mind fuck him to hell and back. I mean, he was pretty mind fucked with the whole thing with Bane during the Nightfall Saga, because I mean, he became crippled and he, feel, he felt actually vulnerable. Well, that's what this brings back again. He has to start second guessing himself. I mean, he gets, point, he gets to the brink of no return and comes back th through it because he's Batman. But um, Court of Owls and City of Owls, which is essentially Batman Volume 1 and Batman Volume 2, Read them, really fucking great, just awesome, awesome, awesome. And being a big Punisher fan, I always liked the Punisher. I just didn't feel that the character has been handled as well as he should within like movies and like uh, cartoons and shit like that. But like, comics, Punisher is the fucking man. Now, my personal favorite Punisher series is Punisher Max. Here's Punisher Max Volume One and Two. If you like no holds bar, balls to the wall, just fucking violent as shit comic book series, Punisher Max is going to have you covered. I can open up the first one, which I, I actually had that as a desktop background for quite a while. So let's see what kind of crazy shit Mr. Castle has been getting into. I want to find just... Uh, that actually reminds me of Kanan Lynch, by the way. I just want to go ahead and toss that out there. But um, something violent and something gory. That's not all that gory. Uh, a lot of crazy shit ends up happening in this. It's, um, damn it, damn it, damn it. Why is it that I'm talking about how gory this is, and as soon as I need to go and find some stuff, um, well, that's not all that violent looking. There, there's a lot of shit where people are just, like, getting blown apart and getting shot in the face and all, all types of fucking stuff, but, um, yep, I'm not finding anything off the top of my head that looks really cool to have on there, so fuck me running. Sorry about that. I failed you. I failed you, YouTube. Please forgive me. But the series, despite the fact that I'm sitting there uh, gushing about the violent factor in it, uh, the story is also extremely good. It's just one of those things, like, if you were ever interested in getting into the Punisher series, I'd say check out Punisher Max. Um, Marvel has tons of different Max series. Uh, Deadpool is another notable one, but I thought the Punisher one was the best one out of the entire lot. I just liked it quite a bit. It's extremely kick-ass, extremely awesome, and it's something that you will want to go and invest some time into, because if not, you're just silly. Also, I like how big these books are. Anytime that they bring out a hardcover book, because, here, look by comparison. That's, that's actually quite a bit bigger, and quite a bit wider. That's what she said, and I thanked her, and then she thanked me. But, yeah, I just, yeah, Punisher, fucking love the shit out of. Oh, and lastly, even though it's not an actual comic book, but I did get to play a whole bunch of it lately, and that's Batman Arkham Origins. Holy motherfuck, is that awesome. I did an unboxing of the Collector's Edition, which I now have uh, sitting up there. But the game is essentially like, imagine Arkham City with, you know, but set years and years and years ago. It, when Batman first started up, like, his second year out and about when he first meets up with Deathstroke and first meets up with uh, the Joker and stuff like that. But, and, and uh, Bane, too, uh, shows up in that. But it's a very kick-ass game. I know that a lot of people have had their gripes and a lot of their complaints about it because of, like, glitches and, you know, it doesn't do much new that Arkham City uh, didn't already do. But I kind of expected that because this is just to tide us over since Rocksteady's working on a new game. So, if anything, I'm pretty fucking happy, and the story in it is amazing. Uh, 
The new dude that they have due to Joker's voice does a phenomenal job. He sounds a lot like Mark Hamill does and just knocks out of the fucking park and then some. The control of the game is very fluid. The city's fucking gigantic. Th this to me is a very Christmassy game. So it, it feels good to play that like during the holiday season. It's the holiday season and breaking some bones. But yeah, it's it does it kicks a ton of ass. Is it as good as Arkham Asylum, Arkham City? I personally don't believe so. But is that a bad thing? Not really, because I hold those games in the highest of regard ever, ever, ever. They're they're honestly on their own fucking planet. They have their own zip code of awesomeness, and they can kick any motherfucker out. They're just like, oh, you stepped across the border. <laughs> so yeah, uh, from one Batman fan to many others out there. Um, check the game out at the very least, or wait for a price drop if you're kind of iffy on it. But, you know, I, I don't listen to reviews. That's really the truth. I decide on my own that I'm going to go and check it out. So I'm, I'm not getting paid by any fucking company to go and tell you. Just check it out. It's really fucking cool. Very awesome. I do. I like it quite a bit. So... There it is. Marvel Zombies, The Punisher, Witch Doctor, lots of Batman goodness. Ah, oh, man. It's been a while since I, I did one of these. I missed doing them, and I got to wear a Batman shirt all the while. So, uh, and if you get bored, check out the other comic book videos, because I had done them. So if you are new to these style videos, then yeah, there's definitely more. I'll put a link in the description. There's also a playlist and other fucking crap. Blah, 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 blah. But seriously, go out and buy comic books. Those fucking comic book stores are so awesome. And if you don't have any near you, you can just get a subscription and have them mail to your house. Or order them on Amazon, like me. So anyway, to comic book fans all around the world, read comics or die. Seriously, or die, motherfuckers.